Hey everyone, it's Ra from Compose. Wanted to spend a few minutes with you showing you the new interface for what we're working on, Compose 3.0. I've sort of hinted, hinted about it on the community forums on Compose. And um, today I just want to show you what it's like to create a new project in Compose 3.0 and also how to um, use our new track management system. So uh, first things first, let's create a project. And so from those of you who remember Compose 1.0, collaborations at the time were called projects. In the current Compose platform, we renamed that to collaborations. And I think with Compose 3.0, we're going to go back to the project concepts. Uh, concept. So let me just go ahead and create a demo project here. And um, I'm going to paste in some lorem ipsum because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time typing a project description, but that's what that would be. That's just, This is where you would type in a little bit about your project and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, next, you select your genre. And uh, I've whittled the list down to the most common. I will add more as people request them, but I don't want to pollute it with a bunch of genres that never get used. And I've also added one called TBD by popular demand. I've added this one. This was a, a request that was added a while ago. Um, and again, most recently when, when I announced 3.0. Uh, so this is when you don't know what the genre is going to be yet. Um, you can just select TBD. So next you select your BPM and you can type in a value here. Um, you can use decimal points. You can uh, add text in here, 90-ish, you know, whatever. It's, it's free form. Same thing with the key. That's also free form. I'm just going to go ahead and type in E for the uh, key. And then there's an optional copyright statement if you want to add some copyright information in there. So let me just go ahead and create the project. And voila, so now we are on the project overview page. So of course this has changed considerably. The whole UI is different. Here's all the information that you just typed. This is where you can put your cover art, uh, who started the project, how long it's been around, and when it was last updated. Um, and then at the bottom here, you'll see this create track request. I'm going to talk a little bit about this at the end of the video, and I'll have another video uh, that's going to go into more detail. But for now, I want to focus on the tracks tab up here at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and click, click on tra uh, track, tracks, and uh, you'll see a big icon inviting you to upload your tracks because there are no tracks uploaded yet. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on upload tracks and I'm going to select them from my hard drive. I've got uh, this project that I had done a little while ago called Hey Little Girl. There's a steps folder. I've got a bunch of WAV files, but I'm just gonna use the MP3s for today just because they'll upload quicker and I don't wanna waste a whole lot of time as you watch files upload. So here's all my tracks. I've cleverly named them by the instrument type and uh, who worked on them. So I'm going to upload my guitar tracks first because I wanna show you something. So you can see I've got uh, uh, eight guitar tracks in here and um, I've selected them all. I'm gonna go ahead and select open and click on upload and those things should start zipping along. Depending on your internet speed, uh, this will either go slowly or quickly. You can see mine's going pretty quick. Uh, they're zipping along. Looks like I got two more, one more, and now they're done. So um, let me just click refresh to make sure they're all shown here. Yep, okay. So now I've got um, all my guitar tracks. And actually, you know what? I, I realized I wanted to create some folders first. This is a new concept in Compose 3.0. Uh, with the current Compose platform, you really can't create different folders. Um, but uh, I decided uh, with some feedback from a lot of people that this would be a really nice feature to add to make it more like your file system at home. So like I might create a folder called SEPS. And you can see here, I can give it a name and also a color. If I wanted to color code my folders, I'm just going to choose the standard color. So now I've got a folder called SEPS. Let me go ahead and while I'm here, I'll create another one called Mix Master. And you can create as many folders as you want. You might have some archived, um, you know, whatever you want. Um, so now I want to move all of my guitar tracks into the SEPS folder. So what I'm going to do is select all my guitar tracks. Right, so it puts a little check mark next to them, and I'm going to remove them from this root folder. By the way, I don't know if you guys noticed my root folder, I cleverly named it as Drive K, as in Compose. I thought that was kind of cool. 
Um, so let me cut that, cut all the guitar folders, go into my steps folder, and then I'll just paste them in here. So now I've got all my guitar folders in my steps folder. And um, um, let me go ahead and select them all again. And because I want to change them, you can see right now, I got this little icon next to the file name and that represents the track type. Right now it doesn't know that these are guitar tracks, right? Because I just uploaded MP3 files. The system doesn't know what kind of tracks they are. I want to change that. I also want to add a color. So I'm going to um, select all my tracks again and I'm going to edit them all together. And I'm going to tell the system that these are guitar tracks and I'm going to label them in green. Um, I choose green. You can choose any color you want, obviously. But uh, in Apple Logic, I've just gotten in the habit of all my guitar tracks being in green. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, do the same thing here. So, okay, so now you can see there's a little guitar icon next to them and they're in green. Awesome. Okay, let me upload some more tracks. Select my files again. Let me just grab all the rest of them. Uh, I got some bass, drums. Uh, I got a mandolin, two violin tracks, and two vocal tracks. Awesome. Select, upload. Again, depending on your internet speed, uh, this should go pretty quickly. Again, they're they're relatively small files. Looks like they're all. Looks like the largest one I see there's about four megs. So, a couple more, two more. There we go. And the last one, Alex's backup vocals. Alex did an amazing job on this, on this uh, particular project. Really happy with it. Just refresh, make sure they're all there. Okay, so uh, same kind of concept. They're all uh, unknown types and they're not colored. I'm gonna choose my vocals and I am going to edit those two. Uh, vocals I like to make gray because microphones are gray, I guess. I don't know, That's I've just, I've always done it that way. Great, so now there they are at the bottom. My two violin tracks that Ben submitted. Ben did an amazing job as well. And I will choose violin. And violins should be brown. I should have a brown color here, but I'm gonna choose this purple color. I guess violins are brown, I'm not sure. Mandolin, I got a mandolin track. Um, so I've been selecting using the checkbox, but if, if it's an individual track, you can also just kind of go over to the right here and select edit and this time because I'm editing one track I get some additional fields I can change the label and um, I've got the option to change a file name um, I can go ahead and again select the, the, the type I'm gonna make this one like a light blue or a blue or like a cyan and again you can change the label here to make it a little bit friendlier like um, I'm gonna call it mandolin uh, this is more like what the users would see mandolin solo one by Ben so I'll say by Ben, right? Um, file name, why would you want to change the file name? Well, sometimes the file name is a little bit weird. This is the name that's going to be used when you download the track. So if you want to maybe change that here, you can do that. I'm going to leave it as default, click apply. And because I edited a single track, it takes me into the track detail page, but I'm not ready for that yet. So let me go back to steps, um, the base track. Let me edit that one try to do this real quick here I think you guys get the idea now base is at the top bases are red like Rickenbackers I don't know why uh, maybe a Hoffman uh, Hoffner sorry and Kevin's drums let's make the drums blue now yellow drums the blue I like to reserve for my mixes okay so there now I've got all my tracks there pretty awesome um, so I can, of course, not of course, but I can, I can listen to these by clicking the little play button and it brings up, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. It brings up the, um, little audio player that now at the bottom of the page and it's just always just kind of pinned there. And, uh, so there's the violin track. Hopefully you guys can hear me talking over that. Um, here's some some vocal tracks that Alex did the backup vocals. Hey little girl, want to tell mama's home? Awesome stuff. I got time, she won't mind. No, and, uh, I mean, you can also just kind of click into these to see the details. Um, so in here, I can see again the track type, the name, the um, I got my edit menu up here as well. I can download it, edit, delete it. Um, I got my timeline, uh, who uploaded it. 
the file size and the original source. So remember I uploaded MP3s and, and when this was uploaded. Down towards the bottom is where I'll have all the comments. I haven't implemented that piece of it yet, but uh, this is where you'll be able to comment on this track. And we're going to have a feature where you can actually, you know, select part of the actual WAV file and, and do uh, markers just like we had in, um, in the current platform. Um, one more thing I want to show you is this is sort of a new feature that we just added that I thought was a great idea is that I've got all my tracks now. I want to select them all again and I'm going to click edit one more time. And you may have noticed down here on the bottom right, there is a, a feature called lock the selected tracks. So what that does is when you click that, um, you'll see when I click apply, it's going to add this little lock icon next to all of the tracks. And what that means is I can't delete it now. So you can see this will prevent sort of accidental deletions of your tracks. Um, you can see delete is grayed out. And even if I tried to like, let's say select all of these uh, and I tried to delete them, delete, it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna really wanna delete these 15 tracks? And then it's gonna say, sorry, you can't do that um, because they're locked, right? So that's kind of a cool feature. And um, what else? I think that's about it. That's everything I wanted to show you. Um, let me jump back to the um, project overview page. And I'm gonna do another video on this, but the, the piece at the bottom here, the create new track, the concept is, so let me just go back here. I've got all these great steps. The one thing I wish I really had was a banjo track. I'm hoping somebody will upload one. Um, so what I could do now is in my project overview is create a track request. And I can say, I really want a banjo track. And again, I'm not gonna go into this now, but this is, I'm just kind of teeing it up for the next um, video, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about that. So I hope you like it. Let me know what you think. Um, and uh, I look forward to uh, comments so that we can make this even better. Thanks everyone.